Hi everyone, welcome to Man with Demon. Please don't forget to subscribe, enjoy the video. The scene unfolded with a scene where a man wearing a black dress folding his arms said, let me know if you have any issues with anything. He said that is just the default marriage contract. You may add a few conditions as needed. A girl slides a paper on table saying, I don't think adding anything will help. The man hearing this gets confused and asked, what? The girl whose name was Rosaline she holding a marriage contract points on a specific part and said this part. She pointing at a name said, Melchior Postenmeyer. The man said, my name? Are you saying that I am not good enough to be your husband? What is it about me that bothers you? Rosaline replied, I'm not saying that you're not good enough. Melchior gets confused after listening her. Rosaline said, you are the empire's only archduke and the head of its most noble family. She steps towards him and said, I also heard that you are an excellent knight and extremely wealthy. She gets close to him and said, however, is this not our first meeting? She said, looking back, think of it, my life has always been this way. Rosaline tells about her past. Her father said to her, a daughter, this family needs an heir. I suppose you will do. Rosaline, you must be trained as the successor. Little Rosaline with a smile on her face replied to her father, Yes, father. I will do my best. She tells, I was forced to go through rigorous training from a young age, all for the sake of my family. Her father said, Did you really think becoming a successor would be easy? Study all of this, even if you must give up sleep for it. She tells, I went through so much in order to gain my parents' approval and for the sake of our family. But when I turned twelve, Alphonse, my little brother, was born. It was a miracle. All of my training was put on hold and I was sent away to a boarding school. But once it became clear that Alphonse was too sickly to be trained, her father said, this man is your fiancé now. He will join our family and the role of our family head will be turned over to Alphonse once he is old enough. Also, we can no longer afford to send you to boarding school. She thoughts, I'm nothing but a prop. I'm not allowed to make my own decisions. This is how my life had always been. Changing scenes we saw a knight shouting while holding his sword, members of the Crimson Rose House. Admit to breaking imperial law and show yourselves. Meanwhile, Rosaline's mother gets shocked and asked her, What is going on, Rosaline? Rosaline, standing in front of window seeing down, replied, It seems father took up gambling. He died while running away from the knights, and now they're telling us to turn ourselves in since they have evidence. Her mother shouts in fear, I know that. That's not what I'm asking. What's going to happen to us? Alphonse hugs her mom with fear and starts trembling. Rosaline said, I will stop them. Mother, please take Alphonse and hide. Her mother shouts, what? How are you going to stop those soldiers by yourself? She picks a sword and replied, I will do whatever I can. Alphonse gets tears in his eyes and her mother said, are you insane? If you do that, those men might harm my son before we're even tried. Rosaline holding sword steps towards them saying, that's why I'm telling you to hide. Her mother stopping her shouts, Rosaline. Rosaline. One of Rosaline's servants said to the knight, This is most uncivil. I implore you, please wait. He was saying, At least give the madam enough time to while knight slash his sword on his throat. Blood starts dripping from his throat and he starts coughing the knight shouts, Get rid of anyone who gets in your way. Find every single of them. Meanwhile Rosaline comes and shouts, what do you think you're doing? She enters and holding a sword in her hand. The knight gets shocked seeing her and asked, Lady Crimson Rose? He taps on her chest and said to Rosaline, I am the captain of the Azure Knights. Count Crimson Rose has broken imperial law by participating in gambling. This goes against the virtue of nobility and demeans the empire's dignity. He said to her, You must be aware that this is a felony akin to treason. Rosaline grips the sword and said, No, I am not. The knight said, Come clean and admit to your guilt. Your sentence will only worsen if you resist. Rosaline replied, But if I do not resist, I would be admitting to a crime I did not commit. 
That is how imperial law works, is it not? She draws her sword saying, I cannot allow you to arrest me when I had nothing to do with my father's gambling. She pointing her sword toward him said, If you intend to arrest me, you'll have to work for it. The knight starts to chase her shouting, There she is. After her. She steps on stairs while knights were following her shouting, Halt. She seeing their speed thought, They're faster than I expected. She stabbed her sword into clean and said in her mind, In that case. She pulls the clean from stairs causing the knights to fall. The knights shout, Arg. A knight fell down and lose his sword. He said, Stay away. Rosaline comes towards him and he gets shocked with fear and shouts, No. Rosaline moves towards him and pierces his hand with her sword. A knight seeing this comes towards her saying, How dare you attack the Azure Knights? They starts fighting and their swords hits each other. Then more knights come and attack her. She alone beat them causing injuries to them. Meanwhile a knight hostage her mother and Alphonse. Her mother shouts, Rosaline, help. The knight was standing in front of them holding his sword. Seeing this her mother and Alphonse starts trembling and sweating. Rosaline said to him, Are you really taking my mother and brother hostage? You, the captain of the Azure Knights? The knight replied, If you have not resisted in the first place, they wouldn't be in danger. The knight said, Since you just lost your father, I'm sure you wouldn't want to lose the rest of your family. Rosaline grit and starts sweating, she said, Please let Alphonse and my mother go. Then the knights tie her with rope and throw her on ground outside. The knight holding his injured hand said to her, You bitch. You can forget about getting to the capital in one piece. You call that thing a proper sword? He grabs Rosaline from her hairs and said, What, not even a peep? Are you scared? You were running amok just moments ago. She replied to him, Seems like you wouldn't have been a knight for much longer, even without my help. The knight asked, Ha, excuse me? She replied, I'm saying that you should be grateful I only injured your wrist. That way, you can retire with your dignity intact. The knight gets furious and kicks her. He said, you cocky little bitch. Go on, keep running your mouth. She starts thinking, I guess I will be executed once I got to the capital. Maybe it's better to die than to go on living like this. Suddenly the knight stopped kicking her. She thoughts, wait, why did they stop kicking me? Melchior comes and said, are you her majesty's knights? She raised to see what's going on and she thoughts, an unfamiliar voice. Seeing him all of the knights get shocked and she thoughts, who is he? The knight kneeled down and said, your grace, what brings you here? Melchior standing in front of him said in a cold tone, I could ask you the same thing. The knight said, well, her majesty ordered us to arrest the members of the house of Crimson Rose. Melchior gets shocked and asked, Crimson Rose? Then he saw Rosaline tied up and with rope. Rosaline seeing him thought, his eyes, they're as cold as a frigid winter storm. They make him look like he's not even alive. She thoughts, is it because they're so blue? Melchior standing in front of Knight said to him, so your excuse for wrecking the whole manor is that you were arresting everyone? The knight replied, that's because they were hiding from us. Melchior said in a cold tone, since when can people hide behind picture frames? The knight starts sweating and said, oh, uh. Melchior said, then you should go back inside and look for rest. He said, seeing Rosaline, I will be in charge of her. She starts blinking hearing this. The knight stands and said, that's... We can't do that, your grace. The empress ordered us not to hand the criminals over to anyone. Melchior steps toward him and said, The emperor has given me permission to take her with me. You're not implying that the empress's orders supersede the emperor's, are you? Or do you mean to make my obsidian knights search the manor for you? Melchior squeezed knight's shoulder and he said, Of course not. Melchior said, Escort the lady, Heinz. He replied, Yes, your grace. Heinz picks her and said to her, I will take you to our medical officer, my lady. Melchior stands there and see her. In the next scene we saw Pallas, 
the medical officer holds Rosaline's hand and said, Fortunately, your bones seem to be intact. He raping bandages on her hand said, This is an injustice. How could they harm a lady like this? You would think they're common thugs. Rosaline tilted her head and said, I suppose they were enraged by being forced into early retirement. Damien, medical officer of the Obsidian Knights, said they still shouldn't have done this. What if they ended up leaving scars on you? He said, your bruises will heal in no time, and if you take good care of these cuts, they won't leave any scars. She said in a bored tone, yes, yes. Damien asked, were you even listening? He said, the human body is not invincible, so you have to take good care of it. Hearing his words, she sighed and thought, he didn't look like he would nag so much. She asked him, when did you say the interrogator would be here? Damien smiled and said, oh, he will be here soon. He bowed and said, I will take my leave then. She thought, what was with that emphasis on, he? Is it someone important? She see the room and thought, now that I think about it. Aren't interrogation rooms usually dark and stuffy? I've been accused of being a felon, haven't I? I feel like they're treating me too well, considering. She was thinking and the door opens making a sound. Someone enters and said, Rosaline Crimson Rose. Hearing this she thought, that voice, and she turns towards him. It was Melchior holding some papers in his hand. Seeing him she thought, the Archduke? Why is he here? She bowed and thought, will he be interrogating me himself? Melchior said, are you Rosaline Crimson Rose? She gets shocked. She replied, yes, I am. Melchior drags a chair and said, Rosaline, do you know me? He sits on the chair and Rosaline said, I heard the others calling you the Archduke. There is only one Archduke in the Empire, and you're quite famous. Melchior said, I see. You're eighteen years old and only have a mother and a brother, who is only six. Am I right? Rosaline replied, yes, your grace. Melchior bowed toward her and asked, why don't you have any other siblings? She gets confused and asked, H.M.? Pardon? Melchior asked, Do you have a much older sister? Or a cousin who looks a lot like you? Rosaline gets confused and replied, I don't. The House of Crimson Rose does not have any extended family members. He leaped and said, Do you have any distantly related family members who look like you? Perhaps someone about ten years older than you. She gets confused hearing his talk and thought, what on earth is he talking about? She replied, I don't really know my mother's side of the family, but my red and green eyes are from the Crimson Roses. He stands from his chair and sighed. He said, I must have been mistaken then. Rosaline asked, what does any of this have to do with my father's gambling? Melchior turns holding a paper and said, gambling, yes. I suppose we must discuss that as well. He said, before that though, I see here that you have put an end to the careers of twenty of Her Majesty's knights. According to their testimonies, you swept through them like a hurricane, and targeted their wrist tendons specifically. Rosaline said, it was justified. Melchior asked, oh, and why do you say that? Rosaline said, because they tried to arrest me even though I had committed no crime. The only way for me to prove my innocence was to fight back. That's what it says in the books. Melchior said, books are not always indicative of reality. He glanced at her and said, you won't be charged with anything else, though. You were never a knight, nor did you ever participate in any sword fighting competitions. You couldn't have been capable of such a feat against an order of seasoned knights. She said, but I did it. Melchior said, I'm saying that it doesn't sound believable. Melchior said, no one will think to blame you. The numerous injuries among the Azure Knights will be explained away. His words hits her hard. Melchior said, going for their dominant hands and severing the wrist tendons is a feat not even skilled swordsmen could manage easily, especially with a raper. Hearing this her pride breaks down. Rosaline said, would it be difficult for you too? Melchior said, Rosaline, do you wish to be charged with injuring the Empress's Knights? Rosaline replied, I will take responsibility for my actions, but I will not admit to anything I have not done. 
Melchior said, that is not a wise choice. Melchior said, Rosaline, are you aware of the reason the Azure Knights were there? She said, I am. Rosaline said, they found proof that my father was a gambler and accused my whole family of the same crime. The Empress must have offered to send her own knights. I'm sure she had her reasons for taking care of this herself. And that's why her knights wrecked the whole mansion, and she suddenly thought, wait. Come to think of it, it seemed as though they were looking for something rather than someone. Melchior seeing her thinking asked her, is there something you thought of? She glanced and reply, no, nothing but. Melchior said, then keep thinking. I'll try to come up with a theory as well. She gets shocked hearing this and asks, pardon? She said in her mind, I thought he had the answer. Melchior said, don't go anywhere before you think of something. Even if you do, just stay put. Rosaline gets confused and said, what do you? Meanwhile Melchior leaves and closes the door. Heinz comes and said, you grace. Melchior turns back hearing his voice. Heinz said, Count Beaglehoff, the Empress's brother is here to see you. Melchior said, oh. He thoughts, I knew they were after her. Meanwhile she scratching her head said, did he just ignore me? In the next scene we saw a man comes from Emperor seeing Melchior rise from his seat and said, Melchior, I mean, Archduke Postenmeyer. Melchior steps towards him and the man said, I apologize for showing up unannounced. It was urgent, you see. Melchior said, I knew there must be a reason for your sudden visit. The man replied, Haha. Thank you for understanding. The man said, Oh, I heard that you are keeping Count Crimsonrose's daughter here. The Count lost his title and his land, so she is nothing but the daughter of a criminal now. I don't think an interrogation is necessary when the crimes are so obvious. He said, I'm here to ask you to hand Miss Crimson Rose over to me. Melchior sitting in front of him said, H.M., I'll have to think about it that. The man rambled and said, what I'm saying is you don't need to go through the bother of interrogating her. Melchior said in a cold tone, I'm currently keeping Rosaline Crimson Rose here due to her injuries. May I ask why you want me to hand her over to you? Hearing him the man gets shocked and thought, how can someone have such a cold gaze? The man said, I don't want her for personal reasons. I'm simply saying that there's no use in keeping her here. There's nothing more to find out, so why not just send her to jail? Melchior said, I believe there is still a lot that needs to be uncovered. The man get confused and said, hmm? But Count Crimson Rose was killed in an accident. Melchior replied in a cold tone, the Count did not die in an accident. He was assassinated inside of a carriage. While I have heard of gamblers killing someone in anger after losing their money, it makes no sense for someone like that to have hired an assassin so quickly. Melchior said, I cannot hand over someone who may be a clue to. The man slams his hand on table after hearing this. The man shouts, this isn't any of your business. Let the courts handle it. Melchior replied, Actually, as the head of the Postenmeyer family, I am responsible for the safety of the members of my household. In other words, I will not hand her over without clear proof. The man gets shocked and asks, A member of your household? What do you mean? Melchior placed his hand on his chest and said, Rosaline Crimson Rose is my wife. The man gets an attack of sudden shock here this. He thought, his wife? Changing scenes we saw Rosaline in a suspicious room covered by clocks. She blinks her eyes seeing it. She wearing a white night dress glance at the room and thought, where am I? She thought, judging by that strange clock, I must be dreaming again. I wonder what this room is. Suddenly she hears some voices saying, Rosaline. Rosaline, she thoughts, a young boy? The voice comes please wait for me. She thoughts. I've had this dream many times, but I have never heard anyone's voice. She looking for someone thought, where is it coming from? The voice comes again, I'll definitely, so will you, then? So please wait for me. I'll save you. Rosaline hearing this all said, wait, what does that mean? She suddenly feels something and said, who are you? Where are you? Then she wakes up and starts sweating. She thoughts, 
I'm sure that voice is unfamiliar. Who could it be? Someone knocked at the door shouting, Pardon me, my lady. Is something wrong? Damine and Heinz comes and Damine said, I see a dream. I hear a loud noise, so I was afraid something might have happened to you. Rosaline asked, Why do you think the Archduke brought me here? Heinz and Damien glance at each other, and she said, It's been days since he interrogated me, and he has not come back. Damien said, Um, Lady Crimson Rose, are you aware of the fact that you are currently in grave danger? He tells her about the come for her. He said, The day you arrived here, someone sent by the Empress came here for you. His grace sent him away, of course. Rosaline said, Will that not get his grace into trouble? He has no legitimate reason to defend me. Damien said, Oh, he went to see his majesty for that reason. Melchior said, Greetings, your majesty. Balthasar, the emperor. Balthasar said, Melchior, you know how much I favored you, right? I would have allowed you to marry anyone you desired. Melchior said, Thank you, your majesty. Balthasar said, So why did you get married in secret? Balthasar said to Melchior, You know that nobles must get my permission to marry. Melchior replied, I apologize, your majesty, but I had my reasons. Although Rosaline and I were engaged, Count Crimson Rose did not approve. Balthasar said, That shouldn't have keep you from getting my permission. In fact, you should have asked me for help. Melchior said, Yes, you would have indeed made it possible. Melchior said, However, I could not make you go against imperial law. Balthasar tapping on his chair asked, What do you mean? Melchior said, Because Rosaline is underage and cannot marry without the approval of her guardian. Balthasar gets shocked hearing this and shouts while rising from his chair, What? Underage? He asked, How old is she? Melchior replied, She will soon be eighteen and an adult, but her birthday has not passed yet. Balthasar gets excited hearing this and said, Wow, this is incredible. He said, Most people would give up on getting married, but you promised to wait for her to become an adult, and you kept even that a secret from everyone. Just to protect her? How chivalrous of you. Melchior gets confused hearing Balthasar. Balthasar said, In any case, I understand now why you kept it a secret. This is remarkable. I always doubt you would stay a bachelor forever. You even rejected Princess Anastrat's proposal. Melchior bowed and said, I apologize, your majesty. Balthasar said, That's all right, Melchior. You know how much I like you. I am still very grateful for the fact that you saved the Empress six years ago. Melchior said, I have no memory of that. Balthasar said, I know, but I remember, so let me be grateful. Melchior said, yes, sire, I will take my leave now. Now that I have gained your approval, I will be going through the process of marrying Rosaline officially. After that, Melchior steps out. Balthasar said after Melchior leaves, it had to be someone from the Crimson Rose family. He said, I should have killed them all when I had the chance. Changing scenes we saw Damien telling her about Melchior. He said, His grace does not remember anything from before he became an adult. He said, And he has been looking for a woman named Rosaline. Damien said, This is as much as I can tell you. We don't know much more either. Hearing this Rosaline said, I see. She squeezed her cloths and thought, He is looking for someone because he can't remember his past, and because I look a lot like her. He brought me here and even interrogated me. But he didn't send me away, even though I don't know who she is. So why is he keeping me here and protecting me? She said, what should I do? Melchior enters and said while standing in front of door, you just need to sign this. Damien said seeing him, Archduke Postenmeyer. Your grace. Did your audience with his majesty go well? Rosaline asked, sign what? Melchior taps the paper on the table. Melchior said, this promissory note, letter of attorney, and marriage certificate. Hearing this Damien and Heinz both gets shocked. She seeing the paper rubs her eyes. She starts reading, Emperor Balthasar approves of the marriage between Melchior Eckhart Julian N.O.V. Postenmeyer and Rosaline Crimson Rose. She gets shocked reading this and said, huh? 
She shouts, what? Marriage? She asks, so you told the emperor that we got married in the spring, and that I am therefore no longer a member of the Crimson Rose family? Melchior said, yes, so you cannot be held responsible for your father's crimes. Your mother and brother will be fined instead of going to jail, and those fines, as well as the cost of reinstating your family's title and territory, will be paid in full by the Postenmeyer family. Hearing this, all of them get shocked. And Rosaline shouts, what? Rosaline asked him, I don't understand any of what you just told me, your grace. Don't you think you're trying to marry a woman you don't even know? Melchior replied, Is it so strange that I am willing to marry you in order to save you? She replied, Yes, of course it is. You don't know anything about me. Damien and Heinz gets confused and Damien whispered to Heinz, Maybe his grace is sick or something? Melchior said, You must be aware of the fact that if we do not get married, you might spend the rest of your life in jail. Rosaline said, Are you saying that you pity me and are simply being charitable? Melchior replied, I wish to save you. Is there not enough of a reason? Damien and Heinz said, That isn't enough at all. Rosaline thinks, The marriages of high-ranking nobles are of great importance in the empire. Isn't he being far too flippant about this? Is he trying to swindle me? Or maybe I am an easy tool for him to use, but if that's not it either. She paused and stops thinking. She asked to Melchior, Is it because I look like the woman you have been searching for? He glares at Damien and Hines for telling her about his past and said, You too. Rosaline defends them saying, It's not their fault. I'm simply asking you this based on what you told me during my interrogation. She sighed and said, But whatever the reason, shouldn't you have asked me to marry you first? Melchior said, There was no time for that. I was ordered to hand you over as soon as I brought you here, you see. Rosaline said, you could have still told me your plan then. I was stuck in this room for a whole week without any clue as to what was going on. Melchior said, I have to go and see the emperor before they could make another move. She thought, wait. He's making it sound like he did it all for me, but in the end he had no intention of asking me for my opinion. She thought, but it's not like I have any other options right now. Rosaline said, All right. I'll sign the marriage contract. Melchior nodded his head and said, A wise decision. Rosaline raised her finger and said, On one condition, though. Melchior gets shocked and asked a condition? She said, Please duel me. They come out for a sword fight. Damien and Heinz were standing there to see them. Melchior wearing gloves asked, Rosaline, why do you insist on dueling me? She holding her sword thought, I guess I can't just say. To bring you down a peg. She said to Melchior, I've been stuck in that room for quite a while. And since I was not allowed to step outside at all. I've been itching to get back to sword fighting. She said, besides, we're getting married. You should learn more about me, right? Meanwhile, she thought, what a lame excuse. Melchior gets confused and said, as you wish. She thought, just now, he wasn't giving me permission. Does he actually respect me? She squeezed her sword's handle and said, Thank you for indulging me, your grace. He holding his sword said, Melchior, call me by my name from now on. She swings her sword and said, All right then, Melchior. She dashed towards him. He stopped her with his sword. She noticing that he hasn't removed his sword's cover thought, a scabbard. He didn't unsheathe his sword? She thinks, I thought he would use his large frame to his advantage. But he's keeping his word sheathed on purpose and deflecting my attacks in a certain direction. If I had not jumped back immediately, he would have been able to grab me. Melchior said, you challenged me to a duel, so I expected you to be stronger. She smiled and said, ha. Melchior, I hope you won't regret saying that. She sits down and said, it might sting a bit. Melchior said, HM? She jumped and come over him holding her sword straight at him. Seeing her like this, Melchior gets shocked. Damien and Heinz also get shocked seeing all this. They shouts, your grace. Melchior's sword fell down and a piece of his cloth as well. He caught Rosaline. 
She gets confused and said, Mel, Chier? Melchior holding her in his arms said, You're just like her, she asked, pardon? Melchior looks at her and said, You're exquisitely the same. Rosaline said, Please let go of me, Melchior. Your shoulder, it's... Melchior said, Rosaline, who taught you how to fight like that? The Rosaline I knew used the exact same sword fighting technique. Melchior said to Rosaline to remember saying, Please try to remember. You must have met my Rosaline. She replied, When will you let it go? Melchior still holding her in his arms said, But the way you fight, it's exactly like, She interrupts saying, I didn't learn this from anyone because I'm the one who came up with this technique. Melchior gets confused and asked, What? She shouts, I said, let go of me. Melchior put her down, and she turns her head towards Damien. She said to Damien, Sir Damien, please take care of his grace's injury. He gets confused and said, I will. She said to Melchior while leaving, I'm going back to my room. Please let Sir Damien take care of you. Then she starts walking through a garden full of flowers. She thought while passing through the garden, how did it come to this? Being here and taking on this role doesn't even suit me. If I force myself to keep going, will I really find happiness? She thought it might have been better if all of this had happened while I was out cold. Suddenly the flowers change colors. She thought it would be better than trying to force myself into a place I don't belong. Suddenly she noticed something and stops. She found herself in a forest and thought, H.M., wasn't I just in the back garden? She seeing the trees said, where am I? She thought, oh, I thought I was in the back garden where the roses were blooming. I had no idea the manor grounds were so huge. Maybe the garden is connected to a forest? I'll just keep working for now. I'll find my way out of this forest or get back to the garden eventual. Meanwhile, someone shouts, stop it. She turns back and thought, what was that? Some guys forcing a boy said, it's easy. All you have to do is sneak into Professor Newt's office and bring back the answer key for the exam. One of them said, you go see him all the time, so no one will suspect you. The other one said to the boy, besides, I bet you get all the answers anyway, since you suck up to the old man so much. How else would you be able to get such good grades? The boy glares at them and said, I won't do it. One of them said, hey, did you hear that? He says he won't do it. The other two starts laughing, he he bohaha. The guy grabs the boy from his shirt and said, I thought you were smart, but I guess I was wrong. Why don't guys like you ever listen when we're being nice? He trying to punch the boy said, you're asking for it. He squeezed the boy's shirt and the boy gets scared. A stone come and hit the guy's hand stoping him to punch the boy. They get shocked and said, what was that? Who did that? One more stone come and hit a guy's head and he shouts with pain, Gah. They trying to find who was that said, damn it, where is it coming from? Meanwhile Rosaline was hitting behind a tree holding stones. One of them shout, you better than be whoever you are, or I'll punch you so hard that. Meanwhile Rosaline throws one more stone. The stone hits the tree and pierce it. Seeing it they get shocked. They seeing it said, it got stuck in the bark. They run away saying, I'll get you next time. The boy stands and said, thank you for helping me. He said, I would like to thank you face to face. If it's all right with you, would you please come out here? She thought, I kept throwing the rocks from different directions on purpose. How did he find me so quickly? She comes out while thinking, he shouldn't have been able to see me with so many trees in the way. She scratched her face and said to him, There's no need to thank me. Are you hurt? The boy said, No. Thanks to you. I didn't get hurt at all. She said again, There is no need to thank me. It just didn't sit right with me to see so many boys bullying one person. She thought, I only chased them away because I didn't want to keep watching it happen. I don't deserve his gratitude. The boy said, still, the fact remains that you helped me. The boy introduced himself to her saying, my name is Julian. I am a third year student at the Imperial Academy. Could I ask for the name of my savior? 
hearing this she stumble. She feels awkward and thought his savior? How embarrassing. I didn't even do much. She thoughts, I wonder if it's safe for me to tell him my name. I guess I don't have to tell him my surname. He won't be able to identify me with just my first name. It'll be much better than raising suspicion while trying to come up with a fake name. She said, my name is Rosaline. Julian said with a smile on his face, Rosaline? So that's the name of my savior. She starts blushing and said, please stop calling me that. Julian said to her, thank you for saving me, Rosaline. Please call me Julian. He places his hand on his chest and said, please contact me if there's ever anything I can help with. I would like to repay my debt to you. He said then again, I suppose there really isn't much I can do to help you. He said, even if I'm never of any use to you, I still wanted to offer my help. She thoughts, what a nice boy. He's very considerate for his age. She thoughts, boys like this shouldn't have to deal with bullies growing up. Julian said, I'll take my leave now. Please take care, Rosaline. She waves her hand to say bye. Julaine starts walking in opposite direction to her, and she thoughts, I should hear back, too. If the direction Julian is going leads to the academy, then the Postenmeyer Manor should be in the opposite direction. She steps forward and suddenly found herself in the same garden she was walking through. She seeing the flowers thought, those are the rose bushes I saw earlier. I'm glad I didn't end up getting lost. She enters in Melchior's room and thoughts, I wonder if Melchior got his shoulder patched up. She closed the door making a sound and noticed Melchior standing there and said, HM? Melchior folding his arms standing there said to her, you were gone for a while. She asked, how's your injury Melchior? He replied, it's nothing to worry about. He sits on the chair and said, the wound isn't deep. It'll heal soon. She said standing in front of him, I apologize for earlier, Melchior. He said, HM? He asked her, why are you apologizing? She replied, I believe. I was being childish. There was no need for me to get so upset. She thinks he might have made all the decisions without asking me, but he did help me in the end. And yet instead of thanking him, I challenged him to a duel and even wounded him. How could he be fine after getting stabbed by a sword? I shouldn't have been so immature. She said to him, Thank you, Melchior. She said, I'll sign the marriage contract as promised. Is there anything else you need from me? He said, HM. No, not really. She thoughts, I wonder if he's being secretive or just honest. She singing the marriage contract thought, but still, how surprising. She signed and thought, I can't believe that my whole life will change with just one signature. Since it's come to this. This time I'll do my best in order to be helpful to the Archduchy. She thoughts, you can do this Rosaline. Melchior tells her about the fine amount on her family, and she gets shocked and thought, What? You paid 70 million gold in fines for my family? She thought, I'll have to work really hard for this family. In the next scene we saw Damien and Heinz. Heinz was holding some papers and Damien was standing there. After Melchior and Rosaline left Damien said, What did we just hear? He said, There must be something wrong with my ears, right? Did His Grace actually said that he would marry Lady Crimson Rose? Heinz said, Yes, he did. Damien said, I feel faint. He even rejected up Princess. And now he is getting married out of the blue? Heinz putting the papers in envelope said, It's not out of the blue, Damien. He said, Officially, their relationship has been secretly going on for a while. Damien said, But isn't that just a lie? Heinz said, It's not uncommon. When it comes to marriages between nobles, the circumstances are often embellished. Damien said, I guess so, but... Heinz turns and said to him, So let's be careful about what we say. For Lady O, I guess her title is different now. For her grace's sake. The next day, Rosaline wearing a white and green dress said, Melchior. I would like to learn how to help this family. Melchior asked, How to help this family? What do you mean? She said, 
whatever I need to learn to act as the lady of the house. He reading something replied, do as you wish. She scratched her head and thought, that's all? He's not going to walk me through it? She said, um, we will teach me? Melchior replied, you don't need anyone to teach you, just do whatever you want to. Rosaline asked, pardon? Melchior said to her, you must have learned about managing a noble house at the academy. She said, all I learned was theory. I have no idea how to apply any of it. Melchior said, that's something you have to learn by trying it yourself. Whatever it is, just go ahead and try doing it your own way. If anything goes wrong, you just have to think of a solution. She said standing in front of him, but that's a lot of trial and error. I have to be wary of the Archduchy's reputation. I can't just keep making mistakes. Melchior said, our reputation isn't so for frail that a few mistakes will affect it any way. She thought, oh I see. I thought I would have to learn how to do things perfectly, so as not to make any mistakes at all. That was how things were done in the Crimson Rose family. But the Postenmeyer Archduchy isn't like that at all. There are several noble families that swear allegiance to House Postenmeyer rather than the Emperor. With such authority and its core the Archduchy has only become more powerful over time. Melchior said, you are allowed to make mistakes. And you're allowed to fail. He said, the Archduchy will be a solid foundation for all of your endeavors. No matter how many mistakes you make, you can always start over. Is that not convenient? She thought, it must be due to his confidence that those who swear fealty to House Postenmeyer are so loyal. She thought, I'm sure Melchior must have worked very hard to be recognized as the head of this great family. He seems so flawless. I wonder if there was ever a time he struggled with his position. And if there was, I wonder who stood by him to support him through it. Rosaline said, Melchior. He said, H.M. Rosaline asked him, Are you still looking for her? The woman who is so important to Melchior. The woman also named Rosaline who looks just like me. Melchior replied, No. She asked, Why not? Wasn't she your first love? Hearing this he gets shocked. Melchior said, My first? No, that's not it at all. She asked, What is it then? She thought, his expression says it all. He's such a bad liar. Melchior sighed and said, Rosaline, no, that person was my teacher. She thought standing there, liar he got so excited just because the way I fight is similar to her style. I'm sure she was more than just a friend. I don't know why that makes me feel so strange. Melchior said, Rosaline, I mean, the other one, not you. She folding her arms said, I know you're talking about her, but it is a bit confusing, so let's think of a different name for her. Melchior asked, a different name? She said, you keep having to clarify who you are talking about. Wouldn't it be easier to just call her by a nickname? She thought, I guess that was too much to ask. The only reason Melchior made me was because I look like her after all. Anything. I'm the replacement. It would make more sense for him to call me by a different name. Melchior said, Rosalind. He said, let's call her Rosalind. That's how you pronounce the name Rosaline in the East. Melchior said, in any case, it's not like what you're imagining. Rose, Lynn, was my savior, and I simply wanted to find her in order to thank her. She said, of course. Meanwhile, she thought, he seems to be in serious denial. It's easy to see what's going on, though. She thinks still. At least I won't have to feel weird about being called the same name. Changing scenes we saw the Empress saying, Ha! Huh? Wilhelmine the Empress. She said, I hear that Archduke Postemeyer and the daughter of the House Crimson Rose have married. His Majesty approved the match. The man who was sent to Melchior to take Rosaline said, What do we do? A man in black dress said, the countess and her son had nothing on them. A man sitting next to him said, indeed, and there was nothing inside of the manor either. The empress said, the only person left is Rosaline, Crimson Rose. But Archduke Postenmeyer took her away. The empress squeezed her wrist. The man said, what should we do? 
If that power did not return to you even after the Count died, that means. The Empress hit her mouth with a hand fan and said, Stop hounding me. You're making my headache worse. She said, You're completely useless. Count Crimson Rose is dead. And Noble's gambling house was proof against him, so the likelihood of me getting dragged into this is slim. The problem is that I wasn't able to retrieve the power that His Majesty bestowed upon me. I thought I would be able to get it back as soon as the Count died. But since nothing happened, it must have been passed down to his successor. She sighed and thought. It was something so precious to His Majesty. She clenched her hand and thought, so how could it get taken away from me just because I lost a bet? In the next scene Rosaline was sitting on a chair with some books. She reading the books thought, thank goodness they transcribed all of the family records. She turns and thought, this should help me figure out how to run this household. I thought they might not keep a record here, since this is just their residence in the capital. The lady of the house assists the head of the family, so I have to do well. She reading about Melchior said HM? So Melchior isn't part of the main family line. He became the head of the family after competing with all the branches, and the fact that it only took a year for him to become the head. Probably means that he didn't spend much time with his immediate family. His parents passed away when he was young, so he grew up at the academy without anyone to take care of him. I guess that's something Melchior and I have in common. I think I know how that must have felt. He met someone who was both a mentor and a friend during that difficult time, so I can see just how important she must have been to him. But if he hasn't been able to find her using the Postemeyer family's influence, maybe that means she's no longer part of this world. Is that why he was able to just marry me without much thought? Suddenly she thoughts, wait, why am I letting this get to me? It's not like... We got married because we love each other. Snap out of it, Rosaline. She clenched her hand and thought, there's no need for me to find out about his past. Or get jealous even if you were to cheat on me. Meanwhile, someone knocks at the door, she asked, what is it? The servant said, your mother and brother are here and want to see you immediately. She gets shocked and asked, my mother, is here? Her mother and brother Alphonse comes and her mother said, Rosaline Alphonse said, Hello. Her mother said to Rosaline, Rosaline, Archduke Postenmeyer saved us. She replied, Yes, I know. Her mother grabs her hand and said, I can't believe he is willing to take you as his wife. We owe him so much. Her mother said, To think that my very own daughter is now the Archduke's wife. Rosaline said, I didn't think you would be so happy about this. Her mother replied, Why wouldn't I be? Now that we are related to the Postenmeyer by marriage, no one will be able to look down on the Crimson Rose family. Rosaline thoughts, she has no idea how wrong she is. Realistically, the Crimson Rose family will be considered vassals at best. High society will talk about how they don't deserve this honor. They'll be a laughing stock. Her mother said, the Archduke even promised to support us both with our territory and our manner until Alphonse turns of age. Rosaline turns her head and said, It'll be a debt you'll have to repay. Her mother said, H.M.? Rosaline said, The Postemeyer family isn't just going to support you for free. You won't be able to repay this debt even if you work for the rest of your lives. Her mother smiled and said, Don't be silly. That's why I'm saying we should be grateful. Rosaline said, shouldn't we try any pay at least some of the money spent on us? Her mother replied, I'm sure Archduke Postemeyer doesn't have time for such frivolous details. You have no idea how which the Postemeyer family is. We could use as much money as we want for the rest of our lives, and it wouldn't put a dent in their finances. Rosaline said, so you intend to spend their money frivolously? Hearing this Alphonse stops playing and see them. Her mother said, how dare you speak to your own mother like that? Rosaline said, I'm just asking you a question. Her mother said in anger, I don't like your attitude. I gave birth to you, you know. You can't act like this just because your father is no longer with us. Are you going to look down on me because you're the Archduke's wife now? Rosaline sighed and said, that's not what I'm saying. 
Her mother shouts, that's what it sounded like. You never even tried to come and see us this whole time. Her mother poked her and said, you were too busy with your new lover, weren't you? Her mother points her finger at Rosaline and said, you drags us into trouble by causing a ruckus at the manor. I see you haven't changed at all. You're Alphonse. Older sister get your act together so you don't embarrass him. Rosaline said, the way I live has nothing to do with Alphonse. Her mother shouts, that's the kind of attitude that made your previous fiancé break of your engagement. Her mother sighed and waving her hand said, the Archduke only took you in because you never got married and stayed a virgin. That shameful situation led to this blessing, so I was planning to forgive you. Rosaline was standing there hearing her mother's words silently. Her mother said, I was being friendly in an effort to make amends, but you're such an awful girl. Rosaline squeezed his hand and thought, What do you know, mother? You've never paid attention to me. Even when you claim to have simply forgotten about my debut. I thought it couldn't be helped. I couldn't even attend my friends' birthday parties because we couldn't afford it, and I became more and more secluded because of it. You made sure. I never even dared to complain about the enormous amount of studying I was forced to do. I tried to be understanding even when you gave everything to my brother as soon as he was born. Everything I was trying to achieve. No one was there for me. No one even bothered to check up on me and ask how I felt. Rosaline said to her mother, If you consider me part of your family, if you love me as much as you love Alphonse, you wouldn't treat me like this. Her mother pulls Alphonse and shouts, What does your brother have to do with this? You are not the same. Rosaline shouts, I'm your child, too. Her mother said, Alphonse isn't arrogant like you. Will you grow up already? You'll regret living like this, you know. Rosaline said, Ha, huh? you're right. You know, I regret it already. I should have made it clear earlier. Her mother asked, What? Rosaline said, I'm Alphonse's older sister, so I'll make sure Alphonse is taken good care of at this manner. Her mother said, you're finally starting to talk sensibly. Her mother gets shocked when Rosaline said, but since I don't seem to be your daughter, I have no reason to take care of you. Her mother shouts, wait. Rosaline, she said, as the wife of the Archduke, I have the final say concerning everything in this household. Rosaline points her finger towards the door. She ordered her mother to leave, saying, Countess Crimson Rose, please leave. Changing scenes, we saw the Emperor saying to Melchior, So, you can't hold the wedding because she's still in mourning? Melchior said, Yes, although we aren't allowed to hold the funeral either. Holding an extravagant wedding while she is in mourning would be inconsiderate toward my wife. The Emperor said, I see. She did just lose her father. He said to Melchior, When did you learn how to be considerate of others, Melchior? You're all grown up. The emperor said, All right, I understand how you feel. But it would make me look bad if I rushed to approve your marriage without a wedding. You must at least hold a small informal ceremony. Melchior standing in front of him replied, Yes, sire. He leaves and starts thinking, If it's just an informal ceremony. It should be enough to bring in a priest and go through the motions. The Empress might still be targeting Rosaline, so we have to make sure not to draw attention. Suddenly he paused and noticed something. Rosaline wearing a white dress was standing at the balcony. Melchior see her standing there and ask her, What are you doing here, Rosaline? Rosaline replied, I was considering running away in the middle of the night. She turns and Melchior said, even though you have signed the marriage contract? Rosaline said I was joking. I was about to take a walk to get some fresh air. Melchior said, The moon is bright tonight, but it's still too dark for you to go out alone. I will join you. Melchior stops and notice her eyes and said, H.M.? Your eyes look red. Are you sick? She turns her head and said, Never mind that. Melchior said, I can't. Melchior moves his hand forward and said, I am your husband, after all. She smiled and gives her hand to Melchior while thinking, I thought this was nothing more than a contract marriage to keep me out of jail, and that I was nothing more than a substitute for his first love, because I looked just like her. 
but Melchior acting like my husband is making me feel better. They comes out in the gardens and Melchior said, The gardens are huge. I tend to stay at the main manor outside of the city, so they must have the neglected this place. I should have hired a gardener ahead of time. Rosaline seeing the flowers said, The flower that's so pretty. Melchior suddenly remembers his talk with the emperor and said, Oh Rosaline, I have something to tell you about our wedding. Rosaline asked hearing this, Didn't you say we could skip that part? Melchior said, His majesty ordered us to hold a wedding unless we have a specific reason not to, so I think it would be best to have at least an informal ceremony. Rosaline asked him, How many guests will we have to invite then? Melchior said, It can be small, so we can just have a priest come in and marry us. But since your family is here, it might be good to invite a few people who are close to us. She squeezed her dress and said, My family? Yes, I suppose so. Meanwhile Melchior thought, HM? Maybe the idea of a wedding is too bothersome? He closed his eyes and thought, Or maybe she's disappointed because I went back on my word. Melchior said to her, We don't have to do that if you don't want to. Of course I will talk to his majesty again. Meanwhile she thought, Ugh, I keep thinking about what happened earlier today. She said to him waving her finger in air, No, that's all right. Let's do it. She asked him, By the way, Melchior, How is your wound? He said, H.M.? He asked, My wound? Rosaline pointing her finger towards herself said, I injured your shoulder during our duel. Melchior said, Oh, it's fine. It was nothing. What Melchior intended to say was, It doesn't impair my work, so I am fine. What Rosaline heard. It was nothing. You're not a very good duelist. She said in a sad tone, I see. So it was nothing. Melchior hearing this said, H.M.? He thoughts, did I say something wrong? I recover really quickly, so even if I had been hurt much worse, it would have been fine. He thoughts while walking, somehow, I feel like I said something terribly wrong. He starts sweating in thought. Rosaline has stopped talking. Her eyes were red earlier. She might have been angry with me. Was it because I took so long to have her mother and brother visit? Or maybe it's because I come home late every night. Or maybe she was inconvenienced somehow because it's taking so long to hire more servants. He clenched his hand in thoughts. I, Don, T know what to say to her. Come to think of it, she's dressed too lightly to be outside for so long. Should I break the silence by offering her my coat? But she doesn't seem to be cold at all. What if it looks like I'm trying too hard when she's already in a bad mood? Let's be rational about this. How should I be acting while alone with a woman? I think it'd be best to give her my coat, and meanwhile she interrupts him saying, Melchior. Rosaline said to him, Let's go back inside. It's late. Melchior gets confused and said, H.M.? All right. Let's go back. She moves forward while Melchior was still standing. She thoughts while walking inside. It's not like this is the first time we've had an awkward conversation. And I could tell right away that he's the stoic type. So I thought it might be best for us to walk in silence. But how could he not say a single thing while we circled the entire garden? I can't tell what he's thinking at all. She sighed and thought. Will I be able to survive this marriage? In the next scene we saw the emperor standing at empress's room's door. He said, My darling Wilhelmine, won't you let me in today? The empress was standing beside the door to not let him enter. Emperor said to her, The nights are bearable since it's early summer, but I'm also starting to get old, you know. He said, My body may not be able to endure much more of this. The empress opens the door a little bit, and sneak outside. She sighed and said, I could never resist you, sire. She opens the door and turns back. The emperor laughed and said, My beautiful Wilhelmine, so you finally forgive your awful husband. The empress said, Stop laughing. I might start liking you. Emperor said, But I can't help but laugh when I see your beauty. She sits on a sofa inside. The emperor comes and sit next to her on same sofa. She said, don't be so clingy. Go and sit across from me. 
The emperor holds her hand and said, I'm all cold from the chilly night air. I need your warmth. She pushed him and said, Go and sit across from me before I kick you out again, your majesty. He said, Ah. The emperor said to her, Are you still angry with me? For letting the Crimson O's family go, I mean. She sighed and said, Why would I be angry? It was your decision to make, sire. His hand reached to her hand and he said, Please forgive me, Wilhelmine. If you keep withholding your affection, I have no reason to go on. He said, For the last ten days, I was so distraught being away from you that I couldn't sleep. He asked her, Can't you see how gone I look? She replied, No, I can't. He said, Wilhelmine, my sunshine, I am willing to do anything for you. But if you do not tell me what it is you want, I cannot help you. He said, Please tell me if there is anything you need, Wilhelmine. She starts sweating and said, I don't need anything. He grasped her hand and said, All I wish for is to live with you. And die with you, she starts sweating and gets scared. The emperor kissed her hand and said, So, if there is anything you wish for, I will do whatever it takes to make it come true. In the next scene we saw Rosaline wearing a green dress sitting at a table. She closed her eyes and thoughts. I ended up not getting any sleep because of what happened yesterday. There was mother then Melchior. Meanwhile someone knocks at the door. Hugo. The Postenmeyer family's butler opens the door and said to her, Your Grace. He comes to her table and said, Countess Crimson Rose says she wishes to see you. Rosaline said, Please tell her that I do not wish to see her. Hugo gets confused and asked, But Your Grace, she interrupts him and said, She should be fine living in the annex building. Rosaline said while writing something on a paper, It's better than staying at a hotel. And she'll return to the Crimson Rose Manor once it is rebuilt. She thought so. Sure, sending my mother to live in the annex building after her time in jail might look bad, but making it this clear that he does not approve is a different matter. If he were talking to Melchior, he wouldn't dare to act like this. She placing the pen on the table said to Hugo, more importantly, Hugo, I heard you hired new servants yesterday. Hugo bowed and said, yes, your grace. She asked, why did no one inform me that this was happening? Hugo gets shocked and asked, pardon? She said, bring me the papers and letters of recommendation for every new servant. At once, Hugo. Hugo brings all papers and letters and place them on her table. She seeing them said, their previous work experience all looks excellent. Hugo said, anyone whose background is unclear or who does not have a letter of recommendation is not even considered for the job, even if we are in need of them. Rosaline said, well, Hugo. She giving three papers to Hugo said him, send these three people away. Hugo gets confused and getting those papers from her said, pardon? He seeing the papers said, that's not possible, your grace. They have already signed contracts with House Postenmeyer and started working here this morning. Rosaline said, who did they make this contract with? I am the lady of the house. She said, how convenient that they are here today. Bring those three people to me. I will cancel their contracts myself. Hugo bowed and asked, Your Grace, may I, may I ask why? Rosaline tells about their resume saying, The western branch of the Tuscan Corporation closed its doors last August and was incorporated into the southern branch. So Axel, who says he worked there until January of this year, lied on his resume. There is a ship that travels between the continent and the port city of Wertram once every two weeks. But between the start of May and mid-June, there are no ships because of typhoons. And so, Cora, who is from Wertram and claims to have come here at the end of May, also lied. Laban, who says he was the caretaker of the western Snapple orchard outside of the capital. Hugo interrupts her saying, Your Grace, Laban did not lie about his previous job. The Snapple Orchard has had dealings with the Postenmeyer family, so it was possible to verify his claims. Rosaline smiled and said, exactly. We can't have him here because he did work there. Hugo gets confused and asked, pardon? She laughed and said, because the Snapple Orchard used to belong to the Crimson O's family. We lost the orchard because the new caretaker that started working there three years ago conned us. 
I had no idea that there was a relationship between the Postenmeyers and the Snopple Orchard. She claps and said, let's cut that off as well, while we're at it. We'll never do any business with them ever again. She checking the papers said, since we'll need three more servants, let's see. She gives him three papers and said, contact these three people. Hugo bowed and said, yes, your grace. Rosaline said, oh, and Hugo? She giving him the papers said, next time you hire anyone new, come to me first to get my permission, all right? Hugo takes the papers and bowed. Rosaline walking through the palace thoughts, the servants here are great at their jobs, but they all act as though they own the place. The maid that came to clean my room the other day was like that too. The maid said her, I must clean this room, so please move to the reception room. Rosaline said, H.M.? Oh, all right. She thought, they're very efficient, but they have no regard for their employers. Could this be because Melchior is the head of the family? She noticed something and said, H.M.? She seeing Alphonse with a maid walking through their thought, what's Alphonse doing here? Alphonse seeing her gets excited and shouts, Oh, Rosaline. He rushed toward her and Rosaline said to her, You're up early, Alphonse. Are you here to see me? Alphonse said her, Rosaline, I need to go potty. Rosaline thoughts, H.M., he's six years old now, so he's old enough to go to the bathroom by himself, but maybe being in a new place has him scared and uncomfortable. Then again, He did witness his own mother get kicked out after a fight with his sister, so no wonder he's scared and anxious. It must have been hard for him to watch, since he's so young. Now I feel bad. She said to him, All right. Let's go, Alphonse. They steps toward the way to bathroom and Alphonse starts sweating. Alphonse stops her and whispers slowly, Rosaline, I don't actually need to go to the bathroom. Rosaline whispers back, H.M.? What do you need, then? Alphonse whisper, Rosaline, yesterday. I heard the servants here talk badly about you behind your back. She hearing this gets confused and said, oh? Alphonse tells her about last night when he hears the servants talking badly about her. He said last night, Going to sleep by myself is too scary. Did Rosaline really kick Mama out? I have never seen Rosaline get so angry. I have to go and find Mama. He stops hearing someone's voice, the servants said. It's exasperating, isn't it? How could his grace marry a girl from such a worthless family? He peeks through door and listen their talk. They are not even a noble family since they lost their title, right? Even if our master reinstated them, they are still a family of criminals. I can't believe he chose someone like her after rejecting the princess's hand in marriage. Did you see how she kicked out her own mother? What an awful family. I turned down an offer to become a head maid in order to work here, but seriously? The daughter of a criminal? I refuse to acknowledge her as the lady of the house. Hey, here's an idea. What if we cause an accident and ruin her reputation? Rosaline gets shocked hearing this. In the next scene we saw Melchior drinking tea. He puts his CU back on table while holding a paper in his hand and asked Heinz, Have you eaten Heinz? Heinz replied, How could I eat? When you haven't eaten anything yet, your grace? Melchior turns toward him and said, You never cared about such formalities before. Heinz, you look tired. He replied sitting on his table, I'm dying. Melchior asked, Did you skip breakfast? He replied, No, I ate at the first floor mess hall. Melchior asked, Did you not get enough sleep then? He replied, I had about eight hours of sleep. Asked, So you slept fine? What's wrong? Heinz clenched his hand and said, Sigh. Heinz said, I think. I may be depressed. He said to Melchior, You grace, could I go on sick leave? I miss Benjamin. Melchior asked, Benjamin? Heinz shouts, My lover, Benjamin the one I left behind in the eastern region. Hearing this Melchior thoughts, oh. That. Benjamin, two years old banyan tree. Melchior said, we'll be moving back to the east in two months once the wedding is over, so don't worry. Melchior said, I'm sure someone else will take good care of Benjamin in the meantime. 
Heinz asked, How could you say that, your grace? He starts crying and his tears felt on the paper, he said, It's only been half a year since I met Benjamin. What if someone else snatches him away while I'm gone for two whole months? Wah! Benjamin! Melchior said in an angry tone, Stop getting your tears on the paperwork, Heinz. If you're that lonely, why not get the same kind of plant here and raise that? Hearing this he gets shocked. He stands from his chair and shouts, Excuse me? Are you telling me to cheat on my lover, you grace? How could you say that when you yourself are a newlywed? Heinz said, I'll tell her grace, all about how you told me to have an affair. Melchior said, Heinz? Melchior glares at him and said, Care to repeat yourself? Heinz said, Never mind, your grace. Melchior said, If you're that way, why don't you go back east? Heinz gets confused and asked, Pardon? Are you giving me time off? Melchior in a cold tone said, No. I'm telling you to quit your job if you want to go that badly. Heinz again starts crying hearing this and said, You are so inconsiderate, your grace. Melchior thoughts, I wonder what Rosaline is up to. I should talk to her when I get back. Hugo tells Melchior about Rosaline's order to send her mother away and Melchior asked, So Rosaline sent Countess Crimson Rose away? Hugo replied, Yes, your grace. Melchior takes off his coat and said, I see. Melchior gives her coat to Hugo. Melchior noticed Hugo's expressions and said, If you have something to say, just say it. Hugo. Hugo glanced and said, Well, do you think it'll be all right? It's her own mother. Melchior removing his gloves said, I'm sure Rosaline had her reasons. He said, If Rosaline sent Countess Crimson Rose away, that means her mother must have done something to deserve it. Hugo said, But treating her own mother like that won't be good for her reputa. Melchior gets furious hearing this and asked in a cold tone, What was that? He squeezed his gloves with anger and asked, Does anyone dare to speak ill of Rosaline? Hugo gets nervous and said, No, no, nobody has said anything but. I only meant to point out what people might say. Melchior said, It doesn't matter what people may or may not say. Just let Rosaline do as she wishes. Melchior steps forward and Hugo bowed and said, Yes, your grace. Meanwhile Melchior thought, Rosaline, this must be why she wasn't in a good mood last night. I should have paid more attention. I should have been more considerate of how she was feeling. He sighed and thought, why didn't Hugo mention this yesterday instead of today? I had no idea and kept babbling on about her family. She must be asleep by now. But maybe I can go and check on her. He turns and go to her room. He reached at her room's door and stand there. He opens the door and walk inside her room. He noticed Rosaline sitting at Balcony's border. Melchior said to Rosaline, That's dangerous, Rosaline. Rosaline turns towards him and asked, Oh, Melchior, what brings you here? Melchior said, You're not in bed yet. She thoughts hearing this, he always changes the subject. She said, We'll be moving to the east once the wedding is over, so I wanted to memorize what the sky looks like here. Melchior steps towards her and stand next to her. He said, I see. About the wedding. Melchior thoughts. Rosaline definitely looked crestfallen when I brought it up. Maybe to her, family is a sensitive subject. We should just call a priest and read our vows. Without inviting family to join us, then. Rosaline said, Melchior. Melchior said, H.M. Rosaline asked Melchior, how much? Do I resemble your Rosalind? Melchior replied, Enough for me to mistake you for her. She said, I see. I've been thinking about it these past few days. I resented you for deciding on everything without discussing it with me first. But that was hypocritical of me. Because it all turned out for the better. I was lucky. You may have been disappointed though. He clenched his hand and said, I am not disappointed in you, Rosaline. Rosaline smiled and said, It's all right, Melchior. I know that the person you actually wanted was the real Rosalind. Rosaline said, I know that the person you actually wanted was the real Rosalind. Melchior replied, I wanted you too. Rosaline asked, What? 
Melchior said, because you're the one I wanted to save. Melchior thoughts, the fact that I'm trying to understand how Rosaline feels right now has nothing to do with Rosalind. Rosaline said, but you knew nothing about me. She said, and yet you showed me kindness. I think it's amazing that you can so be so kind to someone you don't know. Rosaline said, thank you. She smiled and said, in any case, I'm really sorry for treating you so poorly when I owe you such a huge debt. I swear to make it up to you someday. Melchior thoughts hearing this, a debt? So she thinks she needs to repay me for what I did. Melchior said to her, that's not necessary. He thoughts, I would like her to just happily accept the favor. Why is she keeping me at arm's length? Melchior said to her, You won't be able to repay it all anyway. Melchior suddenly realized that he wasn't mean to say that and thought, Damn it, I didn't mean to say that. She hearing this feels sad and said, Um. She said, That's true. You already have so much power, status, and wealth. I'll do my best not to besmirch the good name of the Postenmeyer family. Melchior said, Rosaline, I? Rosaline interrupts him and said, Don't worry for as long as I am your wife. I'll make sure not to hurt your family's reputation. She said, I think that's the best I can do. She squeezed her arm and thought, This is how it should have been from the start. All I had to do was to remember that this is a marriage contract. It's not like we got married because we like each other. She thought, though I signed a document that says my name is now Rosaline Postenmeyer. And the servants call me. Your Grace? It felt more like I had been hired as a household manager rather than marrying into a family. Rosaline touches his hand and said, Shall we go back inside? You have to work tomorrow, don't you? You said you were busy. Melchior gets nervous and said, Oh, yes, I did. She turns holding his hand and said, I'll escort you to your room. Melchior starts blushing. While walking with her he thought, I think he misunderstood me, but I'm so distracted by her hand against mine that I can think of. Anything to say? Melchior said, Rosaline, while walking. She turns and asked, yes? Melchior said, you're working too fast. You're dragging me along. Rosaline said, oh, I'm sorry. She thoughts, I can't have been going that fast. Maybe he doesn't like me holding his hand. Or maybe he doesn't like that I was leading the way. Thinking this, she leaves his hand. But Melchior grabs her hand. Melchior asks, do you not want to hold hands anymore? Rosaline asks, pardon? She thoughts, I can't see his expression because of the light. She pulls her hand back and said, that's not it. I was just a bit startled, that's all. Melchior said, I was too. Could we hold hands again then? Rosaline said to her, well, all right. Meanwhile, she thought, you can't look at me like that when you love someone else. She stares at his hand and thought, I'm surprised though. I expected his hands to be cold because that's how he acts. She touches his hand and thought, but his hands are so warm. She touching his hand with her finger thought, and though his hands are large, they look elegant. Maybe it's because his skin is smooth. She seeing his hand thought, oh, but they are some calluses. Probably from sword fighting. I have similar calluses on my hands. Melchior holds her hand and said, Rosaline, I was talking about holding hands. Not this. Rosaline said, HM? Oh, right. She seeing this thought, wait, what's going on? Rosaline said, Melchior, is this how you usually hold hands? Melchior said, do you want me to stop? She asked, I don't dislike it or anything, but isn't it uncomfortable for you? Melchior squeezed her hand and said, it's not. She gets shocked and thought, huh? So he doesn't mind holding hands with just anyone? She gets nervous and thought, don't tell me. He is actually a total womanizer. Rosaline glanced and said, Melchior? Um, I did sign a marriage contract, so... Does that involve... Couple duties? Melchior gets confused and asks, duties? He thoughts, does she mean attending public events as a couple? Or is she asking about whether she can go by the name Postemeyer now? Melchior said, 
Of course we must fulfill our duties. She gets nervous hearing this. She gets shocked and thought, wait, seriously? She asks, isn't it a bit weird to do it with someone who looks so much like Rosalind? Melchior asked, why would it be weird? She thoughts, am I missing something again, like last time? Melchior steps towards her, and she said, I'm not. Melchior, wait. Melchior asked, what is it, Rosaline? She said, it's just... She said wait meanwhile she felt on the bed. Melchior asked her nervously, are you all right? She starts sweating and said, well. She closed her eyes and thought, we haven't even gone through with the wedding ceremony yet. Isn't this too sudden? I'm not ready. I'm so flustered my mind is going blank. She thoughts, oh no I need to hurry and back off. She said, um, Melchior? He starts blushing. He turns and thought, wait, what am I doing? Rosaline said, So, it is too weird. I may look like her, but I'm not her. Melchior said, No, Rosaline. I she interrupts him saying, No, I understand. I think this is the right thing to do, too. You should get back to your room now. You said you have to leave at dawn. She pushed him out from her room and he said while she pushed him, Rosaline, I she again interrupts him saying, Good night, Melchior. She closed the door, and he thought standing at the door, what on earth? He seeing his hand thought, all I wanted was to make sure she was sleeping well. Where did it go wrong? All we did was hold hands, but when she stumbled and fell backward. What was I thinking? Have I gone insane? He standing in front of door thought, damn it. I forgot to ask what she meant by saying this was the right thing to do. Next day Rosaline saw a lot of jewels and gifts and asked Hugo, What's all this? Hugo standing beside her said, These are all wedding presents from the Imperial Palace. He said, They said there would be more tomorrow. She seeing all this thought, What do I do? We were going to keep the ceremony small and simple, but if I want to make use of all these presents, that's so much more money and jewelry than I intended to use. She turns towards Hugo and asked, would you get me a map of the capital, Hugo? Hugo asked, pardon? A map? She rising her finger said, if possible, I'd like a large map that includes as many details as possible. After some time, Rosaline comes in the park and said, there's a park in the middle of this street. The servant tells her, yes, it used to be part of the mountain range that surrounded the old capital. He said, when the capital was expanded, the mountains were leveled in order to build more houses. So this forested area is all that's left. Five years ago it was turned into a public park. Rosaline hearing his words said, H.M., I see. She thoughts, I used to work hard in order to save money. But after everything that's happened, it's now my job to spend money. I could spend it all if I rent this park as a wedding venue. The servant holding a paper in his hand said, let's see. The area you will be ending Archduchess Rosalind Postemeyer. She hearing him thought, judging by the way he pronounces my name, he must be from the east. She thought, now that I think about it, Melchior called me, Rosaline, from the start. I wonder if the reason he pronounced my name the western way without hesitation was because of her. She thought while walking through the park, when we move to the eastern region after the wedding, I'll have to meet the vassal families there. Will I be able to fit in well there without being looked down on? She entering through a gate thought, honestly, I'm not confident I can make a good impression, but it's too late to whine about it now. Suddenly she hears Bird's voice. She stops and said in her mind, H.M.? Birds? She found herself in a forest and thought, wait. She gets confused and thought, did I make a wrong turn somewhere? I didn't think there was this many trees in the park. Meanwhile, she hears a voice. Get back here! She saw Julian running from the same boys from whom she saved him. She said, Julian, over here, quick. The boys looking for him sees here and there, and one of them said, wait, didn't he go this way? Rosaline holds his mouth, and they both hide behind bushes, the boy said, weird, I thought I heard a woman's voice earlier, too. After they leave, she said, I think they're gone now. Julian blushed and said, thank you. Rosaline asked, 
Were you getting chased by those bullies from last time? Julian said no. I just happened to run into some classmates I don't get along with. He bowed and said thank you for your help. I should return to the academy now. Julian turns back and tries to leave. Rosaline stops him saying, Hold on, Julian. You're limping. Did you hurt your right leg? Julian turns towards her and said, It's fine, I can get back on my own. Rosaline said, Where do you live? If you keep working on your injury, it might swell up and make it hard to walk at all tomorrow. Julian shakes his head and said, You've already helped me twice, I can't ask for more. I have no way of repaying you. Rosaline crouched and said, Julian. Rosaline said, You're not supposed to worry about repaying an adult. It's only natural for adults to protect children, and children have the right to be protected. Not that I've been an adult for very long. But still. I'll make you a splint, so don't move. Julian said, Oh. All right, thank you. Rosaline tied her lead with a piece of wood and a cloth and said, There you go. It doesn't look like a bad sprain, so just ice it. And avoid walking too much for two to three days, then you should be fine. Rosaline leans toward him and said, H.M. And Julian? Could it be that your classmates are threatening you in some way? Julian replied, It's something I have to deal with myself. Rosaline asked him, And how will you do that? She said, if they threaten you with violence like they did today, are you just going to take it? Rosaline said, use it to your advantage. Julian gets shocked hearing this. He asked, pardon? Rosaline said, if your classmates are underestimating you, then use that to your advantage. In a fight, whoever makes the best use of their strength is the winner. She said, if they bully you again, try this. It's what I used to do. Julian asked, try what? Rosaline whispers something in Julian's ears and he gets shocked. He asked, how did you? Never mind. I'll do as you say, Rosaline. Julian seeing her thought, what a fascinating person, a woman named after roses and looks like she would smell of them. I know it doesn't make sense. But I feel like she can make roses bloom wherever her fingers touch. Julian hardly walks and Rosaline seeing him asked, are you sure you don't need my help? Julian replied, I'm sure I can still walk a bit. She thought, we should be getting to the exit soon. Was this forest always this huge? She steps forward and thought, oh well, we'll get to an exit eventually if we keep walking. Suddenly she saw quick sand in their way and thought, or not. Rosaline said, I'm sorry, Julian. Let's take a break. He sits and said, I think that's a good idea too. Rosaline said, this forest is rather large, even more so than what was on the map. Julian said, this is an undeveloped strip of land. She asked, HM? Undeveloped? Suddenly Julian sees someone at back. Rosaline turns and see. She asked, what is it, Julian? Meanwhile someone suspicious comes out from the bushes. A ghost comes from bushes and said, I am lost. Would you take me with you? Seeing him, Rosaline gets shocked and thought, what is it? Julian said, I'm sorry, Rosaline. I think this is my fault. She asked, what do you mean? Julian turns and said, we're headed in different directions. We don't know where you are going. The ghost stares them and said, I see. He asked them, I am lost. Would you take me with you? Rosaline gets confused and thought, I can't tell whether his voice is high or low. His stuttering even more now, but somehow his voice is clearer. Julian holds her hand, squeeze her hand. He said, it's all right, Rosaline. He's not dangerous. She gets confused and said, huh? Julian said to the ghost, we're headed in different directions. We don't know where you are going. The ghost steps back saying, I see. I see. Julian tries to move back, but the piece of wood with his leg makes a noise. The ghost turns back to them and said, Th then, W where am I SS? Where am I? S sub supposed to G go. Rosaline said to Julian, Get behind me, Julian. Julian said, It's really alright. Rosaline, he's not dangerous. Rosaline asked him, Julian, what is he? 
Julian replied, we don't know. The ghost said, I don't remember. Where am I supposed to go, and what I am supposed to do? I have been wandering aimlessly for so long. Please take pity on me and take me with you. Julian said him, as you can see, I am just a young boy. I can hardly take care of myself. I do not believe I can take responsibility for another person. The ghost standing there asked, Do you not pity me? Julianne said, Just because I feel sorry for you doesn't mean I should take you on. Without considering my own situation, it would end badly for both of us. He said, Things would never go back to the way they were. Taking in a living being would be irresponsible of me. The ghost starts disappearing while saying, Wah, wah. The ghost disappears and Rosaline said, Goodness, Julian, did you just exorcise a ghost? Julian replied, No. All I did was displace it. Once someone with the ability of exorcism comes here, it will be taken care of. Rosaline thought, Is this what they call spiritual powers? My ex fiance mentioned such things. But I never believed him. I had no idea ghosts actually existed. Julian's eyes starts glowing. He covers his eyes with his hand and said, I'm sorry, Rosaline. Please don't look at my eyes for a moment. Rosaline seeing him thought, do his eyes just start to glow? Or am I seeing things? She asked, Julian? His eyes gets back normal, and he said, I'm fine now. Thankfully, it didn't last long. Julian said, I thought it might just reemerge if I made it sink into the ground. So I took enough of its soul for it to be unable to keep its form. My eyes always glow strangely after I do that. And when people see my eyes like that, they're always shocked and disgusted. She gets confused and thought, a strange glow. Come to think of it. Melchior's eye glow like that sometimes too. When I first met eyes with him, I thought my heart would freeze over. I wondered how a human being could have such cold eyes. But maybe Melchior has the same ability as Julian? Rosaline asked him while walking through the forest, Are you really okay, Julian? Julian replied, I am. My leg is fine now too. Thanks to you. She gets confused and thought, HM? He's right. It's not as swollen as it was when I was attaching the splint. She thoughts, I wonder if absorbing part of a ghost soul heals him. Rosaline holding his hand said, Thank you for your help today, Julian. If it hadn't been for you, I might have told that person that I would take him with me. Julian gets shocked and nervous hearing this. He said, not at all. It's my fault that you got involved. Rosaline thoughts, he reminds me of myself when I was his age. I never sought to be praised and didn't want to be thanked either. She holding his hand thought, I don't remember what it's like to try and handle everything on your own. Rosaline noticed the exits and said, the forest seems to end here. Julian said, thank you for helping me, Rosaline. I'll be heading back to the dorms now. She replied, all right, be safe. Julian mumbled and asked her, Rosaline, do you think we could meet again? Hearing this, she gets confused and asked, HM? Julian starts blushing and said, never mind, what am I saying? I'll get going now. Rosaline tries to say, hold on, July, but he runs away quickly. Rosaline smiled and thought, he's acting more like a boy his age now. Maybe he was being shy. I wish he would have waited for my reply, though. Rosaline steps forward and suddenly she found herself in the garden again. The servant seeing her gets shocked and shouts, Your Grace. One of them said to her, I was worried about you. They said you suddenly disappeared. Rosaline replied, I'm sorry for worrying you, Nicholas. He said, Please don't apologize. I'm just glad we found you right away. Hearing this she gets shocked and thought right away. I was in that forest for quite a while. She turns back to see and thought. Walking back what Julian must have taken at least. Suddenly she gets shocked and thought. Wait. Didn't I just emerge from a dense forest? Nicholas gets confused seeing her and asked your grace. Is something wrong? She said no never mind. She thoughts. Was I seeing things? Meanwhile. At the Imperial Palace, a man in green dress said, We sent them wedding presents, 
so I'm sure they won't just hold their wedding in private. Could they have been through our plan, Wilhelmine? Marquis Aberbakeman said, if they hold their wedding privately, we won't be able to sneak in as wedding guests. The Empress sighed hearing them and asked, is there no way for us to bring her to my palace before they move to the east? I need to make sure that she inherited that power from Count Crimson Rose. Marquis Aberbakeman said, I have a plan. The Empress asked, oh, what is it? He whispers in Empress's ear, well, the Empress smirks and said, All right, Marquis Aberbakeman, go ahead with your plan. Meanwhile, Rosaline comes back to the manor, and the servants bowed and welcomed her, saying, Welcome back, Your Grace. She seeing servants gets confused and thought, Something feels off. There are several unfamiliar faces. Did they bring in more sevens from the main manor in the east? Hugo comes and said to her, Something terrible has happened, Your Grace. Hugo tells Rosaline that one of the buildings caught fire. Rosaline asked him, A fire? Where is it? Hugo said, It's one of the buildings on the outskirts of the estate. It hasn't been in use for a while, so we've been waiting to demolish and rebuild it, but... Rosaline steps forward and Hugo said, It wasn't a very large fire. But we couldn't do anything before reporting to you, so... Rosaline stepping forward said, what does it matter how big the fire is? What do you mean you couldn't do anything yet? Hugo said, I decided that reporting it to you takes priority. She stops hearing this. She thoughts, wait, why is everyone so calm about this? It doesn't make sense for them to wait for me in the first place. Don't tell me he's offering to me telling him not to make decisions on his own. Or maybe just like Alphonse said. She thought, they're testing me? Meanwhile, Eric towards Melchior's room. He opens the door and shouts, Your Grace, there's been an urgent message from Postemeyer Manor. Melchior asked, An urgent message? Eric shouts, One of the building has caught on fire. Melchior gets shocked hearing this and asked while rising from his chair, What? Melchior said, I will need to assess things. Let us go. Eric said, Oh, wait, Your Grace. Heinz grabs his hand and said, Hold on, Eric. He asked, There's been a fire? Are there any causal ties? Eric said, No, no one has been hurt. It's one of the outer building of the western side of the estate that's on fire. Heinz sighed and said, I see. That means it's nothing. Eric asked, confusingly, Pardon? What do you mean? Heinz said, waving his hands, They did it to me, too, when I first joined the Knight Order. Eric asked, Did what? Heinz said, the initiation ritual. In the next moment we saw Rosaline standing in front of buildings that caught fires. Rosaline noticing servants' behavior thought, they're being too far calm given the circumstances they must be underestimating me. But if I chide them, now, I miss the opportunity to put out the fire. I have tend to what's important first. She going inside said to Hugo, did you contact the firefighter? I did, but I worry that the fire will spread. Before they get here. She steps in and said, then we'll have to put it out ourselves. Hugo shouts, your grace, that's Danjero Dash. She kicks the door and breaks it. She enters and thought, so it started in the kitchen. The question is how to put it out. If this is a grease fire, we can't just use water. In that case, she comes out and shout. Everyone bring in sacks of flour. The servants brings the sacks of flour, and they pouring it on fire shouts pour the flour. Hurry! Rosaline said to Hugo, Make sure there are not any numbers left, and move all the furniture outside to break it down. He said, As you wish, your grace. Meanwhile Hugo thought seeing her, what a surprise. It's quite impressive for an eighteen-year lady to stay calm and come up with a quick solution when it's clear that the servants are sitting here. On top of that she took into consideration the fact that the food storage is nearby and came up with best the solution. She's quick at assessing situation and a strong leader. She glanced at them and turns toward them. Seeing them she thought, everyone is completely unfazed. It's look like they're simply impressed. So they really were trying to test me. There is no explanation. For any of this. 
She clenched her hand and thought, the issue is that I don't have any proof. The fact that I chided the butler about making decisions without me will be his excuse for not doing anything, and he did contact the firefighter, so even if the fire had spread, it would have been under control. Above all, there's no clear evidence that they dared to test the lady of the house if I raise my voice at them right now. They all just call me hysterical. Not only is this incredibly underhanded, there's method also too extreme. If I had the wrong call, I might have them pour water on grease fire and cause the huge accident. Rosaline taught, I can't believe they're trying to avoid all responsibility for this. Regardless of the outcome, which might have been disastrous. All they care about is their own pride. How could they just neglect their own duties and avoid all blame like this? The way the servants here do things felt strange from the start. Like the way that maid demanded that I, her mistress, leave my bedroom so she could clean. Sure, they might be efficient and good at they what they do, but there's a clear issue. She thoughts, they're not mindful at all of their employer. She asked Hugo, Hugo, how did this fire start? Hugo replied, one of the servants snuck into the kitchen to make a snack and caused the fire by knocking over a barrel of oil. Rosaline said they were using this kitchen? I thought you said that this building is no longer in use because it will be torn down this winter. She asked, who was it that set the kitchen on fire? Hugo replied, well, the servants turns towards a young servant who was standing behind. They point their finger at her and said, I saw her coming out of the kitchen. She gets shocked and said, huh? She drops the sack of flour and said in shock, what? It wasn't me. One of them said, Deborah, you were gone during lunch, wasn't you? The man servant said, that's right. And I saw you snooping around this building before. You should have altered the butler to the fire right away. You trying to avoid blame made it much worse. She starts crying and said, It wasn't me. I didn't even come anywhere near this building today. One of the servants grabs her hand and said in anger, How dare you lie to us? She starts trembling and Rosaline said, Stop. You're saying she did this? The servant holding her wrist said, Yes. She tells holding Deborah's hand, Deborah was hired just four days ago. She drags her. Rosaline thought she must be one of the servants I hired as replacements a few days ago. Hugo said you hired her, your grace, but who could have known this would happen? Rosaline thoughts, he's acting like he feels BD for her. But really, he's blaming me for hiring someone incompetent, implying that I am bad judge of character. I don't like it. Engineering this whole situation just to attack me is one thing but blaming a powerless young girl for all of it is the worst part. They're trying to get out of being held responsible. By making me punish or fire this innocent girl who can't possibly stand up for herself. A servant holding Deborah said, What shall we do, your grace? Should we reduce her wages or get rid of her? Rosaline said, I won't hold Deborah responsible for any of this. Hugo asked, your grace? Rosaline said, she hasn't even worked here for very long, so if she were to get kicked out for this, no one else will hire her. Hugo said, I see. That is very gracious of you, your Rosaline interrupts him saying, but Hugo, I cannot possibly ignore your part in this. He gets shocked hearing this. Hugo asked her pardon? Rosaline said, I may be the lady of the house, but I cannot command all of the Archduchy's servants on my own. That is why I left the training and supervision of the new recruits to you, the head butler. Isn't that right, Hugo? Hugo gets nervous and replied, yes, that is true. Rosaline said that means keeping an eye on Deborah was your duty as the Archduchy's head butler. And Toadie, you have failed in that duty. She said, while I can forgive Deborah, a maiden training, for making a mistake, I cannot possibly let someone with decades of experience at this manner get away with a mistake like this. She said to Hugo, quite frankly, this makes me doubt your ability to serve as head butler to the Postenmeyer family. Hugo gets shocked hearing this. Rosaline said, I will be cutting your wages for failing to train and supervise the new recruits. After all, as head butler, your responsibilities are much greater than those of a common maid. 
Rosaline said, if you have a legitimate reason for failing to prevent this accident from happening, please tell me and I will reconsider my decision. Hugo bowed and said, I am to blame for this. I accept your decision, your grace. I am overjoyed that our mistress is so wise. Roseline gets confused and asked, what? She thoughts, he's overjoyed at having his wages cut? Hugo bowed and tell, the late Archduchess said the same thing. The higher you rank, the greater the responsibility. Proper authority does not push blame onto those below them, but takes on the responsibility of their subordinates' mistakes. Hugo smiled and said, For us employees, our greatest joy is served under employers we can respect. Rosaline turns back and said to Hugo, I'll be going back to my room then. Call for me if you need me to make any decisions. Meanwhile Deborah stops her saying, Um, your grace? Rosaline turns towards her and asked, What is it, Deborah? She said, I, Thank you so much for saving me. Rosaline hold her shoulder and said, You don't need to thank me for doing the right thing. Deborah starts crying and said, Hick, Thank you. Rosaline said, I would have felt terrible if I had let you get kicked out. I did this this for myself, really. Without any authority of your own, it's common to become a scapegoat. You were just unlucky today. Deborah said, actually, I don't think that's why. They tried to blame me for all of this. Rosaline gets confused and asked, HM? Deborah hesitate while saying, well, you see. I heard that Katrina said you weren't a bad person, so I told the other maids that I agreed. But then they all started bullying me for taking you aside. That's probably why. Rosaline holds her shoulders and said, I see. Rosaline thought, punishing the head butler won't be enough. I'll have to change everything. The way they do things here. Struck me as odd from the start. After hours, Rosaline said to Hugo, please get me the servants' work schedules, Hugo. Hugo standing in front of her said, Your Grace, servants of the Postemeyer family do not have separate schedules. Rosaline asked, Oh, then how does work get done around here? Hugo replied, Everyone has the same routine. During the time that our master is away from the manor, we tend to the laundry and any other duties related to the upkeep of the estate, and finish everything by the time his grace returns. Hearing this Rosaline thought, so they focus on getting work done while their master is away. That's why the maid sent me to my office so she could clean my room. Rosaline sighed and said, that's not a very good system. Hugo gets confused and asked, pardon? Rosaline said, the schedule is based in entirely on the employee's convenience. Melchior goes to work at dawn and returns late at night, so no one has had to be mindful of their employer all that time. She said, but things are different now, aren't they? She starts writing something on a paper and said, the lunch break in particular. An hour for eating followed by a 30-minute break. That's mean no one works for an hour and a half. Hugo gets nervous and said, Your Grace, in order for the servants to work effectively, they need a proper break. Rosaline said, I'm not criticizing the length. I'm referring to the fact that because everyone takes their lunch break at the same time, the whole manner comes to a halt. Hugo said, I understand your concern. However, we take care of any urgent duties in the morning before we eat. The probability of anything going wrong in just 90 minutes is. Rosaline interrupts him saying, there was a fire. She said, I doubt you will be able to act in a timely manner in the event of another emergency. Hearing this Hugo starts sweating. Hugo said, then how about having the servants take turns staying on duty during lunch breaks? Rosaline said, no. Making some people stay on duty while everyone else gets to rest will make those people dread work and be less efficient. She draws something on paper and Hugo asked, Do you have an alternative, your grace? Rosaline said, We'll introduce a shift system. Meanwhile, after some time, Melchior comes and shouts, Rosaline! Seeing him, Rosaline said, You're home early, Melchior. How have you be? He grabs her shoulder and interrupts her saying, I heard there was a fire. He said, it was just one of the outer buildings, so the fire didn't spread. It did completely burn up the inside though. Is everything all right? Rosaline said, well, no. 
The building is so damaged that we won't be able to use it. I had the servants remove all the burned furniture since I heard the building would be torn down anyway. Should I have them clean the inside? He holds her shoulder and said, that's not what I meant. He said, I was asking if you are all right. Rosaline said, I'm fine. Melchior said, I heard that you went inside the binding kitchen. Don't be so reckless. He said, what if you had ruined everything? Don't you dare do something like that ever again. Hearing this, she thought some. I thought he would praise me. She said, if I hadn't gone inside to check, I wouldn't have been able to find out the cause of the fire. She bowed and said, I'm sorry. It was wrong of me to behave that way. Melchior gets confused and said nervously, Rosaline. Rosaline turns her face towards other side and asked, Is there anything else you need? Melchior thoughts, I wanted to know if he was injured, how she feels. I want to talk to her about something other than work, but I don't know what to say. Melchior asked her, What did you do today, Rosaline? She gets confused and asked, H.M.? Didn't Hugo report everything already? Melchior sighed and said, No, that's not. What did you have for lunch? Rosaline replied, A tomato salad, mashed potatoes, sausages and a lamb cutlet. He asked, How did it taste? She replied, How did it taste? The way it usually does. He said, No, I mean, there must be something you want to eat, right? Rosaline said, I have to get used to Eastern cuisine. That's why you brought in your chef from the East, right? Melchior said, Rosaline. Asked me, too. She gets confused and asked, Pardon? Rosaline asked him, What did you do today, Melchior? He said, I. He thinks about the works he did, paperwork, audience with his majesty. He said, I. Worked all day. Rosaline said, I see. He said, I'll have to work again tomorrow. Rosaline turns back and said, Sure. Good luck with that. Melchior grabs her arm and said, Hold on, Rosaline. Is there nothing you want from me? Rosaline paused hearing this and asked, Pardon? Melchior said, I would like to do something for you. She gets confused and said, H.M. In that case, could I appoint a maid named Deborah as my personal maid? Melchior replied her giving her the permission, as you wish. She gets happy and said, Thank you, Melchior. Melchior called Hugo and asked him, Hugo, who is Deborah? He bowed and said, A young maid who applied to work here when we were hiring four days ago. She only started working two days ago because she came in as a replacement. Hearing this Melchior thoughts, this is it. This is an opportunity to learn more about Rosaline. He said to Hugo, Call for her immediately Hugo.